Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will see how pipelining improves the performance of the overall system. Usually we hear that in a processor architecture, we use pipelining to improve the performance. But in this video, we will see practically how the pipelining can improve the performance of the overall system. And now without wasting much time, let us get started and see what is interesting inside this video. Friends, before going into the digital design example, I want to consider a mechanical example. It's very easy to understand actually. So here I considered an example of a car assembly unit, which has three modules. In the first module, we build frames. And in the next module, we install parts. And in the third module, we paint the entire body of the car. And each car is getting manufactured in three hours. And after three hours, raw material is fed to the first module. And then again, after three hours, we will get the next car. That means after every three hours, we are getting one car. But it is not enough for a car company. Car company wants more car to be manufactured in a lesser amount of time. One possible answer to this problem is parallel units. So here in this example, I have taken two car assembly units which are working in parallel. So that means now we can manufacture two cars in three hours. Now, if the requirement is more, then you can put more assembly units in parallel. But this is not an efficient approach. Because the amount of investment that we are putting to establish one car assembly unit is very, very high. So we need to think something else. And that something else is called pipelining in car assembly units. And with the help of pipelining, we'll try to use each module in a single car assembly unit in parallel. Though they are dependent on each other, but still there is a possibility to use them in parallel. Let us see how. Friends, here you are seeing pipelining in car assembly unit. So here I'm showing you three stations. The first station builds frames. Station two install parts and station three paints the entire body of the car. Now I'm feeding raw material to the first station and it starts building the frame because other stations are dependent on the output of first one. So they have to wait. So at that point of time, they cannot do anything. But once the first frame is ready, it reaches station two and there we start installing the parts. And at the same time, we feed a new raw material to build a second frame. Similarly, at that point of time, Third station cannot do anything because it is dependent on the output of the second station. So it will be idle here. Now, once these parts are installed in a first car, the third unit starts painting it at the same time, a new unit comes to station two where it starts installing the parts. And similarly, at that point of time, third frame is also started. Friends, this is called pipelining in a car assembly unit. And with the help of this pipelining, we are able to use our stations in parallel. And with this approach, we can build one car in one hour, which otherwise we are creating one car in three hours. And now with the help of pipelining, we can manufacture one car in one hour because all these stations are working in parallel. Friends, surprisingly, we can apply the same pipeline approach in our digital designs also. And let us see how. So this is my simple digital design where I have four modules. This is called task feeder module, which assigns tasks to module one. And output of module one is an input to module two. And similarly, output of module two is input to module three. And finally, we get the output. Once my task is complete, we get the output. One thing we should note here, each module is taking five clock cycles to complete its task. That means one of the tasks is getting completed in 15 clock cycles. Task feeder module can feed a new task to module one after 15 clock cycles if my architecture is not a pipeline architecture. But now we understand it quite well that this approach is not a good approach. It is not an efficient approach. So our performance will be very, very low. After 15 clock cycles, we will be able to complete only single task. But now with the help of pipeline approach, I want to use all these modules to work in parallel. 
That means after every fifth clock cycle, I will feed a new task to module one. When the first task is completed, module one will feed it to module two and new task will be fed immediately to module one. And at that point of time, module two will start working in parallel to module one. Similarly, once this task is completed by module two, it will be fed to module three. So module three will start working in parallel to module two and module one. And we will get the output very, very fast. We will get our output task completed in only five clock cycles instead of 15 clock cycles. So that means our performance is three times higher than the previous one. That is, we shall be able to complete three tasks in 15 clock cycles. Now I'm going to show you in a processor architecture how pipeline improves the overall performance of the processor. So I have taken a particular architecture where each instruction is going through five stages. Instruction fetch, decode, execute, memory, and write. So I want to execute all these five stages in parallel. And we can do so with the help of pipelining. With the help of pipelining, I can execute all these stages in parallel. And if I'm able to do so, I can execute multiple instructions at the same point of time. In a nutshell, we can say that we can complete multiple instructions in a lesser amount of time with the help of this pipelining, which otherwise was not possible. Friends, I hope now you understand the overall idea of a pipelining in digital design systems. And I created this video especially on the request of one of our members called Sushil Kumar. If any one of you also need assistance on a particular subject, please write down in the comment section and we can create videos on that subject also. With this, I'm going to end this video and I hope that this video will be quite informative for all of you. If you also like this video, please press the like button and share your feedback in the comment section. In future also, we are going to create many such videos. So to be aligned with our channel, don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and your support.